October when you're watching one of your favorite horror films like The Thing or Halloween on TV when suddenly New French Vanilla Cool Wind What the hell was that? We get so caught up in looking at fake blood, dismemberment, and drowning in English ration-sized chocolates that reality quickly kicks us in the gut with a cut to commercial. Soon, it'll be cold, we'll have to shovel, and even scarier is, we gotta go buy people presents and host parties with enough food to fill the tummies of orphans for decades. A French vanilla. So we can just pop in a good movie get away from it all. But it's a little too late to watch horror. And it's too early to watch Christmas movies, right? So what do we do? This is a little ditty I like to call The Young Folks Top 11 Alternative Holiday Movies or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Enjoy Ignoring the Holidays Just a Couple More Weeks. It's a work in progress title. Let's start with that official number 11 pick, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Not because I'm trying to rip off that nostalgia critic guy, but because it's just a super obvious pick. Talking about these kinds of films is an idea defined by people's adoration for Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. You see a pumpkin on the stoop covered in snow, you think of Nightmare. You go into the stop and shop with the bat-shaped Reese's Cups next to the candy canes, you think of Nightmare. Basically any instance of the holiday season being forced upon us way too soon, we think of The Nightmare Before Christmas. And rightfully so because it blends what we love about both Halloween and Christmas perfectly and giving us a story where the king of Halloween, Jack Skellington, is tired of the traditional spooky scary formalities and is looking for something a little different when he suddenly stumbles into Christmas Town, becomes inspired, and decides to make his own version of Christmas. In the rest of this list, I'm going to give you the movies that have a similarly effective Christmas backdrop. Films that aren't necessarily about Christmas, but it's prominently there, looming in the background. Kind of like the Santa from the mall stalking you down the street, but just far enough away that he's not breaking the restraining order from last year. Or even Mr. Krampus in disguise. You know. The Krampus. These kinds of films aren't necessarily centered around the holidays, but it pleasantly, or not so pleasantly, is looming there in the background to get our subconscious minds in the mood for tree trimming, candle lighting, and generosity. Or just blends its essence into the story. So, let's get this list on the road. Fortunately, those two men As I was saying, fortunately, those two men did not get very far. They had the good sense to rejoin us again so my record would stand unblemished. Nobody has ever escaped from Stalag 17. Number 10, Stalag 17. Based on his Broadway play, Billy Wilder brought his farcical comedy of American airmen in a German POW camp to film in 1953. Starring classical film stars such as William Holden, Richard Erdman, Peter Graves, and Neville Brand, it's Christmas 1944 in Stalag 17, and the American POWs, who attempted an escape, are discovered and shot dead. The blame put on one among the men who is leaking information. And it's pegged on Sergeant J.J. Sefton, played by William Holden in a performance that earned him an Academy Award. When tensions run high, the inmates create a mob in the camp, and a hunt is made for the real traitor. 
This is an interesting oldie, and it's a theatrical combination of a tragic means men have to endure as prisoners of war, yet it also inserts moments of genuine comedy due to it being a Broadway show, and it actually makes it somewhat a feel-good movie despite the really grim subject material. Tootie, you bad girl, you should be asleep. Did he come yet? I've been waiting such a long time, and I haven't seen a thing. Did who come? Santa Claus. Number 9. Meet Me in St. Louis. This musical gem from 1944 stars our old friend Judy Garland as Esther Smith, one of four daughters to a rich family in 1904 amidst the prime of the St. Louis State Fair. Esther, a teenage girl, is smitten by the new boy next door, John. With her older sister Rose and little Tootie and Agnes, the girls learn the difficulties of growing up and loving. While the early 20th century wealthy culture appears somewhat shallow in 2014, Esther and her sisters come across as strong and endlessly charming in support of one another throughout the year when their father suddenly tells them they're moving up to New York after Christmas. Upon Christmas Eve, things just don't go the right way for Esther, and thus we have the origin of the classic Christmas song, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, as performed by Judy Garland, making the biggest reason this film is on the list. A classic film, a classic actress, and a classic song to really make you appreciate family at any time of the year. Has anybody seen Sam Lowry? Has anybody seen Sam Lowry? Number 8. Brazil. Bra Bra Brazil? Brasiles? By Monty Python veteran Terry Gilliam, among the favorites of cult filmmakers over multiple generations, Brazil is completely bizarre. Take the Orwellian ideas of a totalitarian dystopia in the future and blend it with equal parts oddball humor and a bit of surrealist flair, phew, and that's about what this film is. Sam Lowry, played by Jonathan Price, is a man out of place working as a bureaucrat in this out of sorts future, and attempts to hunt down a mysterious girl in his dreams, meanwhile he's entangled in rescuing a man who was wrongly accused as a terrorist. As evident with dystopian science fiction and typical Gilliam-style humor, this film points out tragically absurd faults and simple things that have been molded into our reality, and for a film released in 1985, it still rings a bit of truth in the same way the old literature of Orwell and Bradbury did. Among the satire of bureaucratic society, trees, lights, and tinsel are strewn about the scenery of the film, brushing another layer of consumerist culture to be poked fun at by Gilliam. Mesdames, Monsieur, bon appétit. Merci. Oh. <laughs> ah, that never you should miss me, Evan. You know what, Sergeant Pistachio Puncher? No, I didn't because I realized when I was a kid. Not only are you and your friends super creepy, you guys suck at cracking nuts. You never did it right. It totally works. After all, I was built in Santa's workshop. And do you even know where that is? Uh, Taiwan? Moving on. Because I'm a karate man, alright? Karate man brews on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. But you don't know that because you're a big Barry White looking mother. Now get off my back, alright? I wish my bitches hurry up and get here. I ain't got no time to be sitting inside this cell with you. Number seven, Trading Places. If you want to see 1980s SNL veterans Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd in their prime, this is the one to watch. I can see! Aykroyd plays Wall Street investor Louis Winthorpe, whose employers, Mortimer and Randolph Duke, decide to perform a social experiment in light of the season and virtually swap Winthorpe's life with a hustler, Billy Ray Valentine, played by Eddie Murphy. The older scheming men leave the pretentious Winthorpe with nothing but the clothes on his back and give Valentine the life of a millionaire and a job in predicting stocks on... 
orange juice. As the two men adjust to their newly outfitted lifestyles until they discover what Duke and Duke have done, at which point, it's time for payback. Set between Christmas and New Year's, Trading Places is genuinely hysterical and heartfelt in the way that it plays with the traditional Scrooge tropes with Dan Aykroyd's character Winthorpe, and it's a complete joy to watch Eddie Murphy in his comedic prime. It's just one of those good-feeling movies about helping your fellow man around that special time of year. Plus, from now on when I see a mall Santa, my mind immediately goes to a drunken Dan Aykroyd in the suit with a full salmon shoved down his pants. Number 6. The Thin Man. A man named Clyde, the titular Thin Man, has been missing for some time before his daughter's New Year's Day wedding, and upon his sudden return to town on Christmas morning, his previous secretary and friend, Mrs. Wolf, is found dead, and it seems that Clyde is the first suspect. Because he's yet to be found, his daughter Dorothy begs a retired detective and former idol of hers, Nick Charles, played by William Powell, to take the case. This whodunit murder mystery often has some quality comedic moments thanks to William Powell's charming wit in tow with Myrna Loy as his wife. Not to mention, The Thin Man contains one of the most memorable dinner party full of suspects conclusions in all of classic film. And what better way to ring in a new year than with some champagne, holly, and a double homicide to be solved. Oh, Morelli, would you mind holding your knife some other way? You're worrying Gilbert. What the f Hey guys, thanks for watching the whole video. You're a trooper. If you uh, like this list so far, or if you want to see how I settle things with this guy here, you can click the link to the second video on this video or in the description below, and you can watch part two of my top 11 alternative holiday movies list. You can hit like and the subscribe button, and you can go to youngfolks.com to check out more great articles and videos by me and the rest of the crew and you can go to our Facebook page uh, the young folks uh, like us there and you can follow me on Twitter with at Evgriff42 and you can follow the site Twitter on at TYF official see you on the other side and happy early holidays <laughs>